Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing my October reading wrap up and I'm really excited. This was a very good reading month overall. I think I have around 15 or 16 books to share with you. So we're gonna hop into it. Okay, starting off with a really positive one. I read this at the very beginning of the month and this is Curds of Prey by Karina Moss. It's part of the Cheese Shop Mystery series. It is book three out of four. Four just came out. I actually just ordered it. Stay tuned for a book haul that's coming up soon. But this Oh, I just love it. I really, really love it. Willa is our main character in this. She is a cheesemonger. She runs a French-inspired cheese shop in Sonoma Valley. She is a wonderful character, like very... She, she just feels very alive. She's very refreshing. She feels like you really connect with her as a character. I like her relationship with her employees. She's just a really wonderful character. And this one has a lot of fun like wedding drama in it. Basically Willa is throwing a like a cheese bar for this bridal party which I want to go to a cheese bar so badly. Wow that sounds amazing. And unfortunately the groom is found dead and he happens to be the mayor's nephew so the mayor pulls Willa aside and asks her to investigate. She gets involved in the crime and I just love this. It was great. It was a good mystery. It was a fun read. Lots of delicious cheese references. I can't wait for book four. Couldn't recommend this series more. It's just so much fun. A thriller I read this month. This was my book of the month pick for September, but actually came out in October. That is The Intern by Michelle Campbell. I really, really enjoyed this book. We have our main character, Madison. She's a Harvard law student, and she gets this really prestigious intern for this judge who's been like her idol. She's so excited to be working under her, and Things get a little complicated though because Madison's brother ends up getting into legal trouble and it, it turns out that the judge will be representing her brother in court. Her brother starts to make accusations about the judge saying that she's not as like straight, she's not in the straight and narrow like she claims to be, she's not morally upright, she's you know maybe bending some rules, taking bribes, like stuff like that. And then her brother goes missing. This had me on the edge of my seat. I was fascinated, I was hooked. I'm not as big on like legal settings. But this was really interesting. I really loved Madison as a character. I thought the writing was super interesting. The ending for this, wow, like just felt like a splash of cold water in the face in like the best way. It was really intense. I really enjoyed this. I flew through this book so I definitely recommend this. I thought this was a fun time and I just love the cover. I love how her outline of like her as a person that's kind of like obscured through like this like glass door. I think the cover art is really awesome for this. So this was definitely an enjoyable read. I really recommend it. Another cozy I read. This is the first book in a new series for me. This is by Emmeline Duncan and it's called Fresh Brood Murder. I checked it out from my library but I've already returned it so I'll pop a picture on screen. This was a very just refreshing, like upbeat, cozy. I really enjoyed this. Basically, our main character is opening a coffee cart with her best friend. Her best friend kind of handles more of the logistics and like the, you know, picking out the coffee beans and making the mixes and stuff where she's more of the customer service front of things. The main character is a very interesting past. She has a mother who's like a con artist and kind of trained her to be a con artist as a young child, but she doesn't use that nowadays but she sometimes reflects on that it's really it's interesting i really like it i thought it was an interesting take uh basically one day like a customer was found dead near the coffee cart she and some of the other food truck like food carts in the area are under suspicion she's worried about her business because it just launched and this could kill their business off she gets involved in the investigation i liked this i really liked her as a character i liked the storyline i liked the mystery I want to read more from this. I enjoyed the coffee descriptions. I'm not even a coffee drinker, but something about coffee just makes me happy nonetheless. So I really loved this. I thought this was a really strong start to the Cozy series. A book that I actually ended up DNFing this month, and I'm really bummed because this was on my fall TBR, which I'll link above if you want to check it out. That is Witch Trial by Kate Conte. This is a full moon mystery. I read this in a recent reading vlog. I read five books for that autumn reading vlog. I'll link it above if you want to check it out. I... So it's, it's called a full moon mystery. Basically our main character is Violet. She is a, she just discovered she's a witch. So she's new to this witchy world and learning about magic. She runs a like crystal shop and so interesting setting. She's got a black cat as a familiar here. Which I like. Her family is very magical. Like there's some of this like there's a very dominant like witchy family. So she's learning about her family history. The world building is really interesting but the mystery hadn't started and I was like a third of the way into the book. Like, I kind of got where it was going, but I was just waiting and waiting for the mystery. So I feel like if you were personally 
wanting a cozy fantasy with like a splash of mystery you might really love this because I thought the writing was beautiful I thought the characters were great I thought the world building and the magic system was very interesting but I'm personally reading it first and foremost for the mystery you know that's that's what I'm here for like I, I want the coziness I want those supernatural vibes for this but it just was a little bit too much for me so if you would if you want like something more like cozy fantasy set in our times with a bit of a mystery I think you'd really like this I thought it was really good otherwise I just ended up giving up on it because I wanted more of a mystery so that's kind of where we ended with that so I'm kind of bummed out because I really really wanted to love this so badly but it just didn't it just wasn't a match for me personally. I read Alice Feeney's Good Bad Girl this month and this it didn't deliver. I'm really disappointed. <laughs> I'm so disappointed. So I love several books by Alice Feeney. I love his and hers. I like Daisy Darker a lot and I really liked Rock Paper Scissors. I do not recommend I Know Who You Are under, like, please, like, at least look up trigger warnings because that one was disturbing beyond belief. Um, <laughs> but Good Bad Girl, I was very excited for this. Basically the premise is we have this nursing home and we have, like, one character we're following who works in the nursing home caring for, the like, a woman there and they get close and she kind of helps the woman break out of the nursing home. There's a lot of drama with that. We're following another lady who's, like, estranged from her like there's all it basically it's all about mother-daughter relationships and they're very estranged it's a very tense book but you're following different women you're seeing that their relationships with their mother or daughter and you're also kind of exploring this past cold case where a baby was actually snatched in a supermarket so it's very interesting I I don't I just it's just something was missing for me. I kind of called it early, so that kind of, I think, killed some of the suspense for me, but it just didn't hit like the other ones. It didn't have the same intensity. The characters were interesting. I thought the pacing was pretty good, but it just was missing something for me. Let me know if you read it and if you've read other Alice Feeney and like how you think it stacks up, but I think her other work was a lot better so far, um, besides the I Know Who You Are, because that one, I think, mentally scarred me. But it wasn't bad like I still enjoyed it if it sounds interesting to you and you are curious like read it I think you'll still have a good time but it just it was more like a 3.5 for me and most of Alice Feeney's work with that one exclusion has been like a five star so it's not that it was bad it was good but it just wasn't amazing like her books usually are for me so I was a little disappointed in that way. Murder Wears a Little Black Dress by Deborah Senfelder. This is a resale boutique mystery. This was a big recommendation from several of you guys because I've been looking for a resale boutique like fashion cozy. I loved this. Thank you to anyone who recommended this to me. I am so in love with this and this actually takes place during Halloween which I had no idea because the cover and the synopsis don't say Oh, actually, it does say Halloween Bargain Hunters. Okay, well, I didn't realize it was Halloween time, so this is actually perfect timing, but our main character is Kelly, and she has recently taken over uh, her grandmother's passed away. She's taken over her grandmother's boutique, and she's trying to up... She, she basically was like a Manhattan fashion buyer. Things got messy there. She's taking over the boutique, and she's deciding to kind of renovate it and redo it, which some people aren't as happy about. She's also got her grandmother's cat, Howard, who is this grumpy but lovable cat who I'm just in love with. Absolutely adorable cat. I loved this. This had a really good pacing. It's only, it's basically 200 pages on the nose, so it's a very short mystery. I really flew through it. Kelly is a great character. I like that we had some character development through this. I liked learning about her relationship with this, people in the book. I liked the fashion. This one basically takes place with a haunted dress where basically a customer tries on a dress and has a vision about someone murdering someone else in the dress and it's really freaky so there's lots of great like like kind of um psychic references Halloween references so very thematic for this time of year highly recommended I want to read the next book in this series I had a great time with this so this was probably like a four stars for me I'm very excited for the next book another thriller I read was The Quiet Tenant and this one was so terrifying we're reading from a couple different points of views but basically we're reading about the women in the life of this serial killer. And we're reading from a woman who he actually has, he's like keeping under false premises in his home, like she's not free to go. 
but she hasn't gotten rid of her yet for whatever reason. And then we're also reading from his daughter's perspective. His daughter's 16 and she lives in the home with this woman and she doesn't know better. She just thinks it's like a friend, like somebody's helping out in a bad situation. And then we're reading from a local woman who kind of is interested in him romantically. It's so weird because you know the entire time that he's obviously a very terrible person, right? He's, you know, he's, he's murdered people before, like all these women before. And you're on edge because you're like, is he going to hurt this local woman who likes him? Is he going to take advantage of her? Is he going to kidnap her? Is he going to kill the person who he's keeping in his house? What's going to happen to the daughter if she finds out that he's a serial? Like, you don't know what's going to go on. It is so tense and stressful and high risk, but so good and so deeply interesting because you're looking... It's just this very unique take on, like, your kind of classic um, serial killer thriller because usually you're on, you know, you're reading from, like, the police's perspective, a detective or you're reading from the you know reading from the perspective of someone who's missing the person who was taken or murdered you know you're reading from their perspective so to read from people who are actively in the person's life who's this monster is really disturbing so really creepy very tense tense thriller I could not put it down I found it super interesting this next one if you guys have watched my channel before it's not gonna be a shock that I loved this but it's death of a neighborhood witch by Laura Levine it's part of the Jane Austen mystery series I loved it. Like, four stars. Hilarious. Laura Levine has a background as a comedy writer, so in her Cozy Mystery series, it, the comedy is gold. It's so funny. Everything is self-deprecating. Definitely don't take it seriously. I mean, Jane Austen is, the, is a freelance writer, and she decided to name her character Jane Austen. And her cat is named Prozac, and I love this cat to pieces. Prozac is the greatest sidekick like animal sidekick ever so hilarious but basically in this one we have a neighbor she's not very nice um it, she's definitely not very nice but she's pretty spooky she's pretty creepy she ends up being murdered and it's kind of a closed mystery which is nice because you have this party where everyone is at and you are trying to figure out who did it i really enjoyed this i thought it was great lots of fun spooky vibes a costume party like just halloween trick-or-treating like everything you want super fun great comedy i mean just if you're looking for a laugh this book actually makes me like laugh out loud i enjoy it so much it's just so ridiculously funny and like it, it's just it's hilarious and the ending for this i did call it but it was just so good the way the author delivered it at the end i was like yes it's so satisfying i was I was rooting for Jane the entire time and I loved it. I can't wait for the next book in this series. Like the next one takes place during Valentine's Day, so I might have to wait till maybe like January to read that. If I can wait, we'll see. But absolutely so much fun. I really loved this. Had a great time. I just finished this last night, and this is The Night Swim by Megan Golden. This is the first book in the Rachel Crawl mystery or like thriller series. And I read Dark Corners, which is actually the second book in the series that just came out in August, I want to say. I read that one first, and I adored it. I gave it five stars. It's one of the best thrillers I think I've read this year. This was very good. So this is the first book in the series that introduces us to Rachel. And Rachel is a true crime podcaster. She's recently become more of a household name. People don't know her, like, don't recognize her face, but they recognize her voice. She's very well known for what she does. And she basically goes to this small town because she's going to be covering a court case. Because this golden boy guy in town who everyone adores, who's going to be an Olympic swimmer one day, is accused of assaulting a woman and the court case is going on and it's it's so... It, it was brutal to read, honestly. There was a lot... It was hard to read a lot of this. Like, it was very... It, it was hard to read it. I'll, I'll say that. Definitely look up some trigger warnings you know, be cautious about that because it's definitely a hard-hitting topic. And then on top of that, you're also watching as Rachel is being contacted by Hannah, who had her sister die when she was very young. She was, like, in her young teens, and Hannah was about 10 or, like, 9 or 10 at the time, and her sister was said to have drowned, thus the night swim, but Hannah thinks otherwise. So she's trying to get Rachel to help her with that cold case to bring publicity to it and to bring it back into the light. And the ending for this absolutely blew my mind and crushed me all at once. I was just, I, I did not see that coming at all. I saw some of the other like smaller twists, but like the big twist at the end, I was just like, what? My, bra I, my, my brain actually like, I think it just stopped for a moment. It was just like trying to 
latch on to the idea that I was reading on the page. It was really good. It was very intense. Definitely a really hard-hitting thriller because it is a very serious nature and it it's hard to read, but definitely it was very well written. I think it was handled empathetically and I think it brings some good perspective to the topic. So I did really enjoy this. I thought it was interesting. It was well paced. I liked Rachel as a character again. I think she's a really great character. I liked the conclusion and yeah, I really enjoyed this. Okay, so we're going to go through the next couple more rapid fire because I talked about these in depth in that autumn reading vlog, which is linked above. In the Study with the Wrench by Diana Peter Friend. This is the second in the Clue mystery series. It is a young adult mystery series featuring like kind of reincarnations of the Clue characters in the board game. I loved this. I love this. It's so much fun and the mystery for this one actually really got me. The first one in the hall with the knife was good. I loved the characters. I loved their subplots. You're actually reading from each character's perspective, so all six of them, but I feel like the author does a good job with their voices, so it's not it's not overwhelming or frustrating to read from that many points of views. But the mystery in the first one was a little easy to solve. This one actually got me. I had I did not get it at all. I actually was pretty shocked at the ending. Really enjoyed it. I highly recommend this. I really want to get the third book. I haven't bought it yet because my library doesn't have these. And I just, I really want to get my hands on it because it was so good. Next one was an all, like, just all-time favorite this month. Peg and Rose, Stir Up Trouble by Lorian Benson. This is the second book in the Senior Sleuth mystery series. I'm caught up on the series, unfortunately, because I want more so badly. Peg and Rose are sister-in-laws and they have a very begrudging relationship. They weren't talking for many, many years. In the first book, Rose reached out. They started to establish a relationship. And in this one, Rose talks Peg into doing some online dating. And it actually goes really well until the date ends up dead. And then they get into solving it and it's amazing. I could not recommend this series more. It is It's quickly becoming like an all-time favorite cozy mystery series. It's so well written. The characters are amazing. They feel so well fleshed out. I love both of them so much. They're both very different personalities, but so good at the same time. I love everything about them. I honestly have absolutely nothing to say about this that I don't love. I love it. So if that's not an endorsement right there, I love it. Another solid thriller I read this month was When I'm Dead by Hannah Morosi. I really liked this. Again, the <laughs> This was a good reading month for me overall. Basically we have our main character we're kind of following is Rowan. She's a medical examiner and parent and one night she's called to a crime scene and she realizes that the body she's examining is her daughter's best friend. Well her and her husband who is like a detective, they kind of panic and they call their daughter and they can't find her. They can't get a hold of her. So they're just, they're trying, they're panicked. They can't find their daughter, which is obviously horrifying. So this is about the two of them. You are going from different perspectives between the two of them, which I found really interesting. They're trying to retrace their daughter's steps and they're learning that they didn't know as much about their daughter as they thought they did. So you're finding all these secrets from their daughter's past. Who's, she's a teenager in high school. The ending for this was, it was hardcore. <laughs> it was intense. It was a very, very intense read. I mean, like always, I would recommend looking up trigger warnings for thrillers because they can be pretty intense and also just a warning with this you are going to have some pretty detailed accounts of like autopsies because one of the main characters is a medical examiner so it's part of her job and what we're reading really interesting it was interesting to see their marriage dynamics as well as they're going through the stress of trying to find their daughter I just I had a great time with this I thought it was a very very interesting read not like a fun thriller in the like more reality TV kind of thriller way like Lucy Foley kind of feels like more of a reality TV thriller where it's more fun and twisty more of a hard-hitting like serious tone to it but very good very intense couldn't put it down and then and the last one from that vlog was I'm not done with you yet by Jesse Q Satanto I liked this I think I gave it about four stars not an all-time favorite but very strong writing style our main character in this is very unique. Our main character in this is Jane and she is a writer. She's not doing great in life. She's got a very unhappy marriage. She's not going places with her career, not like she wanted to. And she realizes one day that her old best friend from college, Thalia, she discovers her online and she gets back into contact with her. And you're reading from different perspectives from her in her college days to kind of find out what happened, like when she first meets Thalia, what happened with their relationship. And then you're reading in the future 
present times when Janus finally found Thalia after all these years and she's also kind of like you know we had this connection in college they had this like night that kind of bonded them together forever because of something so horrific that happened and Jane feels like Thalia is the only person who understands her she's kind of desperate she kind of feels like a stalker honestly it's very interesting I called certain twists but then other ones completely just threw me I had no idea so I was very surprised by the ending I, I was pretty surprised. I, I don't know how I feel about it actually, but it was entertaining. I had a really good time reading it, so for me that's what matters most with the thriller is I want the entertainment value. So this was entertaining. I enjoyed it. I've also read her Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers, and that's like one of my all-time favorite reads this entire year by the same author, and I'm looking forward to reading more from her. She's quickly becoming a favorite author. I'm just enjoying everything I read by, from her so much. Okay, and I actually read two non-fictions this month. I feel like I haven't been as good about non-fiction this year, so I'm happy to have read two. One was a reread, one was a new one. The reread was Better Than Before by Gretchen Rubin. I am a big fan of Gretchen Rubin's work. She wrote The Happiness Project. She does a lot of, like self-help slash like memoir so it's kind of like she will investigate things she'll talk to experts but she pairs it with her own anecdotes or her family's anecdotes and this one in particular I like how they summarize it what I learned about making and breaking habits to sleep more quit sugar procrastinate less and generally build a happier life it's all about habit building and different methods of doing that different strategies for example are you somebody who's better off being like an abstainer like completely cutting something out of your life or are you better as a moderator somebody who can do and like needs a little bit of moderation with something and doesn't so they don't feel deprived very interesting i really enjoyed this i thought it helped me solidify a few of the categories that i'm in and help me give like give me some ideas for how to go about chasing down some of the habits i'm trying to establish so i highly recommend this it's like a 4.5 five star read for me i've read it twice now and i just love it the last one i ended up like i liked it but i didn't love it and it's called the perfection trap and this is basically about how unhealthy perfectionism is and it goes into the research behind it it goes into really establishing why perfectionism is so toxic for you because i i'm a recovering perfectionist i would say for sure and I think something that a lot of perfectionists, myself included, kind of cling to is, oh, well, I have to be a perfectionist, like, I have to make it so good, like, you know, I gotta go above and beyond, like, it just makes me a better worker, you know, makes a better pro product, and it's, it's not actually true. It's like a false narrative. We're kind of selling ourselves, and it actually... It, this really book kind of delves into why perfectionism is so unhealthy mentally, physically, how it's really toxic, how perfectionism isn't even, like, you can't even achieve perfection. It's, you're setting yourself up for failure, basically. And I liked the book, but I just kind of wish there was more applicable information. It, it broke things down in a very factual way, but I kind of wanted more application. That's, that's kind of all I gotta say. So it was like a 3.5 for me. It was good. It was interesting. If the topic is you know, applicable to you, if you find it would be interesting for you, if you're a recovering perfectionist like myself, I think you'd enjoy it. I think it had a lot of good information and it definitely really nailed down that idea of perfectionism is not good. Like it's really, you want to go for, you know, good, great even, but perfect, it's not achievable. And there's a lot to show in the science that he had found and like the research and stuff that he was talking about to show that it actually is just terrible for your health and well-being, but it doesn't even, you don't even accomplish things at a higher level like you probably think you are which is hard to hear. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to myself here. So I found it to be interesting. I think it was a good read. I also read The Strangers Upstairs and enjoyed this so much. I thought this was a really amazing debut. I think I gave it like 4.5 stars. A strong read. Basically we have a main character and she's like a social media star and blogger and she has, she, her marriage is on the rocks. Like it's bad and basically as a last resort her and her husband buy this house which was a murder house because someone was murdered there they buy it really cheap because no one wants it because of that because someone was murdered there and she's going to renovate it and show it off on her blog and she's going to use this to kind of rekindle their marriage put them in this project together and just you know things are going to go right things start to happen she's hearing things from the attic she's, everything it's creepy you gotta go down like a descent into madness and this, this book is very psychological it really plays with your head it's very very intense and the main character is kind of a fraud too because she works as like some kind of therapist but she is not good at what she does and she kind of knows it 
which makes me so sad like it makes me so sad to see that you know because this is someone that you know people should be able to turn to and rely on but so the main character is definitely I would say kind of an unlikable character you don't really root for her but it's her story is very interesting I had a very interesting time with it the house itself is such a big part of this story that it feels kind of alive in a way it feels very much like a character which I love when authors use a location like a house or an estate and it just feels so alive like Manderly and Rebecca you know it just it's a part of the story in such a big way so I really love it I thought it was a great thriller had a really good time with it thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to hit like and subscribe i post new book content and like cozy living stuff every week on this channel especially in the mystery thriller genre if you enjoy those types of books and i hope you guys will hit subscribe and i will see you guys in my next video bye